This is part five in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair a PDP-8M vintage computer. In the previous video I was trying to do a full power test on this power supply. I was using um, an electronic load on each of the three outputs. So we have the plus five volt, the plus 15 and the minus 15 volt rails. And uh, we had a failure and it was a failure of the five volt rail and it occurred at about one third of the maximum output of the supply. And I have a confession here that I fully expected it to fail. And uh, in fact, I expected it to fail a lot earlier than it did. And in this video, I want to explain why that is. And uh, to start with, I mentioned in the video that I had been through and tested all the major components uh, as much as I could before we started the test. So I tested all the big capacitors, etc. And one of the things I'd found was the um, commutator diode from the plus five volt rail regulator was open circuit. So I was quite surprised that this thing was able to regulate the five volt rail at all, uh, let alone in a fairly stable way. You may have seen that the voltage was not that stable, it was dropping off um, not by a huge amount, so it was quite surprising it worked as well as it did. But the other thing I'd noticed was that um, the two circuits, the minus 15 volt regulator and the plus 5 volt regulator, are effectively mirror images of each other. And these two devices should be the same, they're the same part number, but obviously very different um, in terms of batch and manufacturer. And in fact, this device, the one that was on the 5 volt rail, has been replaced at some point. We also found in the previous video that this device wasn't working. So this is the, um, the pass transistor for the plus 5 volt regulator. And I'd also already replaced the driver transistor for that. Uh, although it's only got two uh, legs, one's been cut off, it uses the uh, tab as the third connection and it uh, conducts the current through the heatsink. So um, I was quite surprised that this circuit would work as well as it did considering that this diode was open circuit. And I'll explain why um, that is in a few minutes. But um, firstly, it does appear that uh, someone's been tinkering with this and I just wanted to uh, go over the, the possibility or the potential failure mode that this uh, went through. Now if we recall from the machine itself, when I opened it up, several of the uh, connections from the power supply to the motherboard had been disconnected. And unfortunately on a machine like this, with this design of power supply, that's a very bad thing. In fact, I was so concerned about it at the time that I contacted the owner offered to buy the machine because I suspect there might be quite a lot of damage to the boards on this machine. And I'll go through and explain why I believe that could be the case uh, as we go through this video. Now firstly we'll look at the schematic for the uh, regulator circuits for this supply. And what we have, it's, it's relatively straightforward but um, it can be a bit deceptive. It might look like a linear regulator on first glance, but it's not. It's a switching regulator. But it's kind of a switch on demand regulator. So what we have is the raw DC supply coming in here and you notice it says here plus 39 volts. So it comes in here and of course if this was a linear supply then this thing would just melt if we try to pass the maximum of 17 amps through it. Uh, now, I did notice the heatsink was getting really hot, and that was one of the things that concerned me. Uh, although it failed, I had the top cover on. This is force air cooled. I did have the top cover on, but um, it still kept shutting down. Uh, so it wasn't the fact that the, the cover wasn't on there. Um, but what we've got is the raw supply coming in. Now, it goes through this current limiting circuit. It then goes through this um, chopper assembly. And it's kind of a switch mode arrangement we have here that We've got this large inductor, which is this device here, and this uh, commutator diode here. So what happens is when um, the voltage is below a certain threshold, 
and that threshold is measured down here so basically we have this divider network down here and a voltage sense uh, transistor which compares the voltage we have here against the voltage derived from a zener and that is used to uh, effectively control the chopper assembly and there is hysteresis in this so it acts like a big smith trigger uh, when the voltage uh, dips below a certain level this turns on and when the voltage rises above a certain level it uh, turns back off um, but when this turns off to keep current flowing into the output then we have this arrangement here which is the inductor and the commutator diode so this is kind of meant to fill in the gaps between um, the conduction part of the cycle and when the device is turned off and it's supposed to kind of smooth out the supply and allow the system to properly regulate. One of the key features with this are the seemingly unimportant uh, small capacitors. So we've got um, the output capacitor which is quite large but we also have these small capacitors and we have another capacitor here. Now these are quite important they're there to control the, if you like, the switchover between the conduction of the pass transistor and the um, conduction caused by the energy stored in the inductor. And you don't want these to overlap because otherwise you get a huge current spike when this turns back on when this is conducting. And this is the diode that's failed. Uh, not only has it failed, but it's failed open circuit which is quite alarming because normally if it's an over voltage event or just age they tend to uh, short and fail short circuit. They only tend to go open circuit if they have a very large uh, over current event. Now because this is reverse biased as far as the 5 volt supply is concerned uh, and the incoming supply for that matter then the only way this can be uh, given an overcurrent event is if a large negative voltage is applied to the 5 volt rail. As I said we had several connections on the motherboard disconnected and the reason that can be an issue on something like this is, I'll do a quick sketch of this, but if we have the 5 volt rail coming out and going through to the motherboard then we have a load that it's supplying but this load should be returned to ground so we should have a ground connection and so the current if we look at conventional current flow it should come through here through the load and then back to ground but we also have going to the load a minus 15 volt rail and so this again in theory we should see current flowing in this case again looking at conventional current flow like this so we have two current loops we have one for the 5 volt one for the minus 15 volt and a single ground the problem comes if you disconnect the ground wire then effectively you connect through the load the minus 15 volts directly to the plus 5 volt rail. So if you do that you effectively put a large negative voltage here and this minus 15 volt rail is capable of supplying a lot of current. It's rated at 5 amps but the current limit is up around 20 amps or more. And the problem here is that is connected effectively through the load to here. And so if we look through the inductor, it's 20 amp inductor so very low resistance. Uh, it means that we've got uh, effectively a path from ground here through this diode through the load to the minus 15 volt rail because ground of course is then going to be uh, a lot higher than minus 15 volts this will be forward biased so if you disconnect the ground you can effectively destroy this diode and that's the only real way I can see this could have failed in this mode what we'll do in a few minutes is I'll take the cap off the device off the diode and we'll have a look under the microscope and see if we can get any more information about the mode of failure but um, be very careful when you're working on these machines if you disconnect the ground wire um, while you're fault finding you can destroy um, several of the boards and in particular the memory cards 
um, because they're the ones that make most use of the minus 15 volt rail. Okay, so that's um, what I'm speculating is the potential for the failure. The only other ways this can really fail in overcurrent mode is if there's an overlap and it could be we've got an issue with um, the uh, loop control uh, capacitors. If one's open circuit then we will get overlap but I doubt there'd be enough energy stored uh, in the inductor to destroy this diode, at least to destroy open circuit. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is take the uh, diode over to the workshop. I'll get the cap off and then we'll look at it under the microscope and see if we can figure out uh, what mode this failed in. So what we'll do then is I thought it would be interesting to have a look at this supply in a lot more detail. So we'll put the scope on it, have a look at the various um, signals and uh, the way that the supply operates and then we can start replacing parts and hopefully get it fully functional so that it operates in the way that it's meant to and um, also what we don't want is for it to uh, uh, keep uh, blowing the fuse and for the crowbar to keep kicking in uh, but more importantly we need it to be reliable and this is why I do so much testing on these old supplies they must work reliably otherwise you can very easily destroy uh, boards that are extremely rare. So next thing, let's have a look at this diode and see if we can figure out um, what's caused it to fail. Okay, before I tear the cap off this, what I'll do is just quickly show you that it, um, it is in fact open circuit. I have, I've told you it is, but I haven't um, demonstrated it. So I've got the meter set into uh, diode mode and we should have a diode between uh, these two pins, they should be shorted together, and the case. So if we look here, we can see that both of these pins are open circuit uh, that way around. And if I reverse the leads, you can see that um, it's open in both directions, there's no conduction whatsoever and these two leads should be uh, connected together. So if I put the two test leads on here, we should find these are shorted, which indeed they are. So in other words, um, the diode is completely open circuit. It's um, not showing any conduction whatsoever. Uh, so as I said, I'll go and get the cap off and we'll have a look inside. Okay, so I've removed the top cover from the diode and there is no need to put this under the microscope. We can see that the junction has completely failed and judging by the amount of spatter around it, it was a, a significant of a current event. So it does look like um, this has been subject to an overcurrent, which is a bit uh, concerning. Uh, this bit would normally be pressed down and the junction is between this uh, little tab of metal and the base plate and you can see all that's left is this sort of blackened area that would normally be the semiconductor junction itself. So that diode has completely failed. Uh, so chances are the reason this keeps uh, going into the shutdown mode is because it's not working properly without the diode fitted. There is no kind of um, switching mode. It's just purely acting as a, a chopper and that's not going to work with this type of uh, setup and um, it's causing the heatsink to get very hot and um, ultimately is uh, causing a, an over voltage event on the output and it's shutting down. So what I'm going to do is I've got a replacement um, main transistor, the original had failed. Um, this device, the driver transistor for uh, the main switching transistor had also failed so I've got some replacements for that as well. I did replace it with a a type I had but I have now got some of the genuine type transistors and uh, finally we've got a replacement diode um, for the um, this is the commutator diode the one that's failed so I'll get these fitted onto the supply and we'll make sure it still works I won't run it up to full power in uh, this video uh, what we'll do is we'll get it see if it um, will fire up properly and then in the next video we'll put a scope on the supply and look at it in much more detail and find out exactly what's going on. Um, but for now I'll just refit these and make sure the supply comes back to life. 
Okay, so I've replaced these three devices. So that's the 2N5302, the main uh, chopper transistor. I've replaced the commutator diode and I've replaced the uh, driver transistor um, with the correct type. The one I had in there would probably work fine, but uh, as I now had them, I thought I'd replace the driver transistor as well. So I've currently got this hooked up to the bench supply. I'll just briefly turn it on, see if it uh, all comes back to life. Um, as you can see, I've put fresh thermal paste on this. I will clean this up before I refit it into the chassis. Um, I just want to see if we get the proper regulated 5 volts out uh, before we go any further. So I'll turn the bench supply on. And as we can see, we are getting 5 volts out of the supply. So uh, it is regulating and switching. Um, what we'll do in the next video is we'll attach a scope, we'll start having a look round and see if we have resolved the issue that it was having, which was it wasn't properly chopping, it wasn't switching modes and it wasn't using the um, inductor to recover energy. So this was getting extremely hot at relatively low current outputs. So uh, assuming we don't find any issues when we um, put the scope on here, I'll refit this to the chassis and run it up to full power. As I've said previously, there is no point continuing with the repair of the machine until this supply is working 100% reliably because um, with this type of equipment you can do a huge amount of damage if the supply fails. So we really need to get this properly uh, reliably working before we go any further. So uh, that's working. As I say, next video we'll get a scope on here start investigating the circuit in a bit more detail and uh, see if we've resolved the problem.